today, second year of the Andres Bonifacio Festival or Bonifest 2020. This virtual event is brought to you by Filipino Canadian Writers and Journalists Network, WC, uh, FCWJNet, in partnership with Malaya Movement in Toronto. We also acknowledge that this event is taking place on traditional territory on many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. As immigrants and migrants, it is also our responsibility to learn and understand the histories of those peoples on whose lands we have made our home. We seek to support the anti-colonial struggles surrounding us and firmly connected to our own. We stand with the indigenous peoples of this land in their struggles and demands for water, land, and ultimately their total sovereignty and self-determination. My name is Michelle Charmaine Ramos, and I will be your host for this program. Sound check. Oh, hi, Dr. Milagros Guerrero. Thank you so much for sharing your historical insights. We are very fortunate in Toronto and Canada to learn from a foremost historian in the Philippines. Let us give a round of applause to our guest speaker this year, Dr. Milagros Guerrero. Thank you so much for joining the chat. Now, folks, um, turn, turn on, turn on is, video. Uh, oh, she's muted. Dr. Guerrero, can you hear us? Okay, and the sound is kind of low. Okay. Is the sound okay? We can't hear. We can't hear the doctor. Should we go for a short uh, five minute break to figure out the tech first? Nakamute si Professor Mila Guerrero. That's why we cannot hear her. Uh -huh. can, can, can the techies take Mom? and unmute? Mamila? Ma'am, I'm requesting to unmute you, ma'am. Paki, paki unmute lang po, ma'am. Ayan, okay na. Ma'am, paki... Ma hindi, hindi pa rin kayo maririnig, ma'am. We can still hear you, ma'am. You are already unmuted, but we cannot still hear you. Maybe yung microphone yung po, ma'am. Kailangan niyo pong isaksak. Wala pa rin. Wala pa. Wala pa rin po. Ma'am, baka pwedeng tanggalin po natin yung microphone. Tapos yung computer na lang po yung gagamitin natin. Ayun. Maybe we should do a five minute break for now. So sure. um, folks, we're going to pause for a five minute break, but um, we will come back and have a Q and A with Professor Guerrero. So we'll see you in a bit and please turn your videos on when you come back after this five minute break. Hello, ma'am, I'm sorry, can I, can I suggest something? Yeah. Uh -oh, maybe we can just connect with Dr. Guerrero through the phone of Temi. Sir Temi, because Sir Temi, we can hear her actually. So Sir Temi can just put the phone near the speaker of the uh, laptop. Is that is that possible? Yeah, we can hear her. Uh, um, okay. Uh, wala, wala daw siyang internet connection. Is that possible? Even if we're seeing her on, uh, on, on, on video? Yeah, maybe what we can do is we can talk to her. 
We can talk to her through your phone now. Because we can hear her. Eh? Yeah. Uh, Tammy, we can do that. Tammy, can no, you hear me? We can see you. We can see you on screen. That means you are connected. Uh, yes, we can see you on screen. The problem is the audio connection. Hindi ka... Hindi ka makakonect audio sa amin. Hindi ka rin namin makonektahan audio, uh, sa sound audio, no? Yun ang problema. Actually, ko yung Hermie, mas malakas ang reception ng phone mo. Nadidinig namin si Professor Mila. Oo, pero si Temi, kapitbahay niya yan. Eh. <laughs> so hindi natin marinig. Mas malakas. Temi, uh, Temi. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, kasi ang yeah. suggestion dito, you just call her. Dahil malapit naman kayo physically. No? And then put your speaker on speaker. And put it close to your laptop or computer so we can hear her. Well, I, I can do that. But uh, since I'm using a prepaid phone, I don't know how long this will last. No? <laughs> oh, <my laughs> Yeah. Okay. So what's what's your suggestion? I was trying to call her. Tawagan ko leh. I'll try to call her. So tell me, ako ang tatawag kay Doctor Guevero. Okay. Oh, sige, sige, oh, sige, sige, sige. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mila, tatawagan ka ni ano, Professor Shaw, no? Chua. Uh, thank you. Tatawagan ka na lang yata. Eh, yeah. Si Professor Chua, tatawagan ka ngayon. Thank you, Mr. Chua. Uh, maybe we can proceed with the program as you try to call Professor Guerrero. Yes? Okay. Salamat. Thank you, Rosie. So, uh, Rosie, um, hang on, let me just message you. Okay, can you hear Dr. Guevara now? Oh, I'm talking to you, Marcel. Okay, volume lang. Saka, I'm, I'm finding where the mic is. Okay, wait lang, I'll use a microphone so I can hear. Wait a minute. Ito na, this will work, this will work. I tell you. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Wait a minute, now. Uh, wait lang, I'll use the microphone. Can can you hear us now? Uh, I I can I see you, Michael, and I hear you. Okay, but the Zoom is out because sabi nga ni Hermi, I leave the Zoom, no? Okay, pero sir, so, ma'am, eto na. What I'll do is because you cannot hear the audience, I'm the only one you can hear now, because I I put my you know my earphone. So what I'll do. I'll relay the questions of the audience to you now. Oops. Nawala si madam. Wait lang ha. I'll call again. <laughs> Minumulto yata tayo ni Bonnie. <laughs> Bonnie, allow us to, to ano ha? <laughs> Ayan ma'am, sige po. Narinig po kayo ng mga tao ngayon. Hindi nyo lang sila narinig. So, what we'll do... <laughs> Apa? Siguro ko kanina, siguro, pinapadala ko sa Saskatchewan sa alika sa Toronto. Oh my God. After I post, you know, the microphone on the computer, which is right now on, and I have tried also the external, no? Narinig ko sila, pati yung kanilang mga images, pero hindi man nila ako narinig. Correct. Okay? Tama po. <laughs> oh. So, what's, what's going on? We can I hear. I have been in the past two, three 
Nandito daw si Bonifacio. Oi, so sorry you know, we, they cannot hear you. So the audience cannot hear uh, the audience will not uh, you will not hear the audience. Eh. So if you're trying to talk to Dr. Guerrero now, hindi niya po kayo naririnig kasi naka-earphone po ako so that we can put the microphone. So what I can do oh, okay. is I'm going to Oh, I am, I'm going to ask the question. So I'm going to repeat. If there are questions, I'm going to repeat the questions of the uh, audience to you. They can hear you now because I'm I'm mic I'm micing your phone now. Kung nakikita nyo. Okay. My questions, na bang? already. Yes. <laughs> oh, Bonifest. Bonifiesta. But nonetheless, if that is the strategy that is best, okay, then you do what you do. Okay. Sige po. Thank you, ma'am. What the, uh, what I can do is if you can type your cell at uh, your your ano para it's to facilitate this. Hopefully, I can. You please type your questions now. Are there questions now? Uh, I look at it. Ah. Uh, um. From the chat. Fatima Baron and uh, our okay. and There's Tito Ricky Sierra. Do you see any questions? Ah, uh, Jerry Villarreal. This is a comment. Meanwhile, Andres Bonifacio was one of the key founders and later the Supremo of the KKK, the Re Revolutionary Society, whose main goal was to gain independence from Spain through revolution. Okay, this is this is a comment on Bonifacio and Rizal. Uh, eh, okay, and uh, just to continue, I'm sorry, I'm having difficulty with this. Okay, uh, Jose Rizal came from a very prominent family in Calamba, Laguna. Oops, Calamba. Ta, wait lang. Oh, gumagalaw kasi. Okay, ayan, ayan, ayan. Uh, pro, Calamba, Laguna, his parents list uh, a... Ano ba yun? His parents leased a huge tract of land and rice farms with the Dominicans while his mother's family owned a flour mill at Vansquare in Astoria. That's why was able to study in the best schools. Uh, could this be the main reason why Jose Rizal never wanted to join an arms revolt against the Spanish colonizers for fear of losing his family's ha ha hacienda? Meanwhile, Bonifacio came from an ordinary family. He was able to organize and lead a true revolutionary national government. This is from Jerry Villarreal, ma'am. What do you think? So, uh, I'm going to answer that, huh? Okay. In Tagalog first. Yes, madam. It was not in Pagsamba. Okay. It was not in Pagsamba. Yes, madam. Yes. 
<laughs> okay, madam, this is another question, very interesting, which is, these are two questions connected. I would like to read two of them, the two. Uh, uh, this is, one is, uh, okay, sorry. Okay, this one is from Louis Kiano. Uh, was the, what was the reaction of other historians when you had posited the view that Andres Bonifacio was the first president of the Philippines? And another one, uh, another uh, point here is that uh, Michel Charmaine said, why did you consider or perhaps claim Bonifacio as the first president of the Philippines? So first, I, I, I guess we should uh, summarize why Bonifacio is the first president. And number two, what was the reaction of the historians during the time when you posited this claim around the 1980s, 1990s? Okay, so I, I have met Mrs. Bonifacio Teresa Bonifacio Teresa Santos. Oh, yes. Okay. She had offered the in very important papers to the National Historical Commission, mm -hmm. now the National Historical University. Yes. Uh, but Dr. Fiason said candidly, the government has no money. Okay. But you know, at the time that she offered it, the value of the documents, now we are looking into the collector's market, huh? mm -hmm. the value of the documents at the time was only 100,000 pesos. That's true. I would say at that time, 100,000 pesos was really big, okay? Pero the government had no money to buy because it is ideal that documents like that should be in the possession of the government, okay? So time went by. In the meantime, without our knowledge, without the knowledge of anybody, the price of the uh, uh, papers was going up. You see, that's the collector's market. You see, a small symbol is rare. They cost millions of dollars. Okay. So, oh, voila. We lost her audio. Have we lost? Yes. Ma Mamila, hindi na po namin kayo marinig. Uh, Professor Chua. He got, he's not online. Oh, maybe he got disconnected. I think so, because I've been trying to send him a message. Yes, uh, na disconnect po si Professor Chua. Disconnect yung phone uh, connection. I suggest we continue the program and then we'll come back again. So okay. sure. So yeah. should yeah. we play um, uh, play, community yeah. messages? Yes, she's, she's still talking. Oh, okay. Can you Ma somebody somebody tell Mamina? Them? Mamina. Can somebody tell them that got disconnected? Oh, Professor Mila is still talking to. Uh, yeah, know. it's just his Zoom is the one that oh. got disconnected, but I believe Professor not. Chua is coming in. Okay. We can see her on Zoom. Sorry, I'm here already. Na low bat po ako. Na low bat po ako. <laughs> but naka nasaksak ko na po yung aking uh, fo, ano pasensya na po sa hassle abuhan din yung mga questions so please talagang everything no boni no uh, baka nalulungkot si boni dahil nagkakai watak-watak pa din tayo <laughs> Sige, uh, professor 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 swa question po ni Mila Garcia yon pinorward ko lang sa inyo Ah, apa? Sige po. Uh, question ni Mila Garcia. Now, apa? Now, um, Dr. Guerrero will continue. Ah, uh, kanina po, she was explaining kasi yung pangan po, Santos Pangan na tinutukoy nyo, Mrs. Santos Pangan, was the daughter of Jose P. Santos, which is also the son of Epipanio de los Santos. They were holding the documents that proved that Andres Bonifacio was president of the Haring Bayang Katagalugan. So, Dr. Mila is telling us about those documents that are now, ang value ay mataas na. Dr. Mila, please continue. Oo. Ngayon, ang value mataas na by the millions. Okay? So, there was an argument on the Facebook and don't ask me why I know about the Facebook, even though I don't have a Facebook. So that's a kind of technology that I'm familiar with, okay? Nakaaway na. 
can I speak also in Tagalog? They're, they're bashing each other on the Facebook because the documents you see in the, the, the possession of the government, well, you have to reckon with the collector's market. It's already up to millions. And I think the person or persons who bought the documents love our country very much and Andres Bonifacio that they are in his heart. Whereas those people who are fighting, makasirain mong laban kay Bonifacio, ay wala na tayo. Although, of course, because of the many reproductions in Xerox and in uh, uh, YouTube, eh, hindi na yun magugura. Okay. So, what's the second question? The second question is, what did the uh, historians noong panahon na yun react? How did they react? Okay, uh, this is just an uh, only problem. But only for every 12 minutes, I nawawala. So I'll call again, Dr. Guerrero. <laughs> She's still talking. Apo. Now, I, so, sir, ma'am, uh, please just tell me if we have to uh, wrap up uh, for our time. Okay, Dr. Guerrero, you can continue. You were in the steps of the National Library. Oh, okay. Sabi nila, sabi nila, but you know, Mila, if you write the, the essay and they reject you, they reject you as an academic and they reject you as a historian, what do you say about that? And I said, mga, wrong nga kayo. Okay. <laughs> but I said, but the, but the evidence is there. But the evidence is there. You cannot go against the evidence. Okay? So it may be rejected ba sa tamang panahon ay matatanggap. Tama. So, my essay, uh, a professor at, uh, in the Northern Ilocano University, I will not mention, had said, may I circulate your essay, ma? And I will be frank with you, I will
because the neighbors still rebel. Right. They have a different kind of revolution that we cannot understand. And people die. Okay? And so when you ponder on the word Katagalugan, it does not mean people of Laguna or Batangas or Cavite. It means the Pangalatok in Pangasinan, the Ilocanos up north, okay? The, the Sukwanos. When you go to Panay, when you go around the island, you see Panay River. That you could also say, like uh, um, uh, our our uh, colleague, Nick Lillian, in the Department of State, Mom, Panay River. That's a correct approximation. Uh, Pero ma'am, kasi hindi ko tayo, kikita natin yung view. Panay River is Panay River. Hindi Panay. You go to Cebu, it's the same thing. We are surrounded, we are probably very fortunate that our islands are surrounded by the Great River, the Pacific Ocean, the South China Sea. Okay? But right inside, we have the Katudigan that sustains our life. You know, breathing at the end. Right. Sige, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, so yan, um, Bonifacio contextualized our nationhood through the maritime culture. Now, I'll go through the uh, next question. I'll just summarize because the questions are lengthy. It's like they're another lecture. But uh, basically, <laughs> what we're saying here is from Marantas S. Viamante, uh, UP Diliman, uh, dear Professor Mila, this, this is... Oh, yes. Very good question here. Uh, he was wondering if the books that he got where did he where did he get that? Let me say, uh, these things. How did he uh, get hold oh, of yeah. these books? Did uh, maybe his British warehouse manager lent him or gave him the books? Uh, and uh, this means that Bonifacio's level of Spanish literacy was very high. But did yeah. he write anything in Spanish? Yeah. But he understood. He understood. Uh, that is why I'm saying. Mm -mm. We must also look into the social history of mm -hmm. the Philippines. Like, for example, uh, the books are available for one peso, a little less, mm -hmm. because uh, Manila was a place to visit and there were many foreigners. You see, they brought books with them. Yes. And they returned home. They did not bring these books. And they were selling in what we call almacenes. Mm -hmm. This is all mom and pop stores around Tramuros. Mm -hmm. okay. And if you chance, up until the 1960s, that was the, that was the way people purchased uh, second-hand books. You know why I am familiar with number 73 or 734 Elcano Street, which mm -hmm. is the place where um, Bonifacio Tidato Arigliano, uh, that is now Plata, etc., no. uh, established the uh, Katipunan? Mm -hmm. It's because before then, coming from UP, so it's, it's got to be out of New York biographical, so you have to be there. So you can believe me, coming from UP on the red bus, that's why UP students were called mm -mm. red, okay? <laughs> I will get off at the canto of Ascarata, okay? And then walk to Ascarata because the former headquarters of the Katipunan first uh, was close to a small store that sells Sipsaron Bitukang Baboy, okay? Mm -hmm. Popular among UP students. And I would but I, I would buy my Sipsaron there. And then I would say, oh, this, this is where the, the Kapitunan uh, was established. How come Kirai Kirai, you know? Okay. So people knew they just walked past the, the plane that carried the, the, the uh, block. And then later on, it's a big building already, okay? 
so they had a what we call in the Himalayas the Sabar or Lyon, they plastered the, the statues in the walls, you see. So the Himalayas who were raising their heads, if you look at them, they're like they're waiting for the bus. And no bus was coming, you know. But do people realize how important that was? My, my intention in enumerating the few monuments that we should be happy about and revere okay, is that people don't seem to be aware that these monuments were there para ang tikim ang kanilang damdamin at pagka Pilipinos. Okay? Those people, we who had a chance to go about such monuments in the entire world because before the remnants of an earlier culture, okay? And we connect with them in France or in Spain, okay? And they are protected by, by the government. Okay? That is why it is important that we do take the initiative to protect the, the remnants of a past uh, history. That's the only way to be in history. Thank you, Dr. Guerrero. Thank you. Uh, you uh, just to summarize, uh, to, to answer the questions, basically, uh, the, Manila was already cosmopolitan at that time. Uh, the, the people were going in and out. People, there's a, there's an impression that Manila was poor, but it's actually not the case because there are so many foreigners here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait lang, ma'am. Okay, and uh, naputo lulet. Saglit lang. Okay, I'll call. I'm calling her again. She thought she's still talking to me. Okay, there. Hello. Ah, ma'am, just continue Hello. po. Naputo lang konte. Oh. Apa? And our territory is uh, extends to where the horizon is. Mm -hmm. But I said, as you move towards the horizon, the horizon moves. You mean to say all of that? That you see as the horizon is moving far from you, is your territory. And it so happens that he was a chain smoker. So I said, where do you buy your cigarettes? And he said, umalik na kami sa lupa. Why don't you look at your ano, pockets of cigarettes? What do you see? Don't you see those perforated things that say, you look internal revenue? And he said, yes, okay, I got you. I said, you belong, you pay your taxes to the bus, you respect the Republic of the Philippines. Okay? No matter how the horizon extends to indicate that that is your territory, okay? you have to prove it. Yeah. 
For, thank you, madam. For the interest of time, I'm going to summarize questions that I think were already addressed in some of the answers and uh, lecture of Dr. Guerrero. From Dr. Leonora Angeles, she is saying something Hi, about... Yan. She's saying something about uh, uh, yung, uh, the use of Tagalog being Katagalugan only. Is this a going to be another evidence for Tagalog internal colonialism, colonialism, which I think you already answered, but I will reiterate that in... Mm, yeah. Tagailog. In the Katipunan uh, Kartilya, you taught us, ma'am, that uh, Jacinto said, lah yeah, lahat ng tumubo sa sangkapuluang ito. Well, Mani language. It's a language. language. And Manila is full of provincianos. Provincianos are thriving in Manila. Anyway, this is I think this is Maria Elena Ang, D. Maria Elena Ang, whom I, I, I think I wrote her in one of my papers about uh, Marcos on martial law. Pasiano Rizal and his sisters joined and led Katipunan because they experienced Hacienda Luisita-like patients in Laguna. And when they were exiled with 300 others, they were thrown to Tondo where Bonifacio was their neighbor. I think he's talking so, about... The Rizal family has uh, mm -hmm. landholdings in Tondo. Ah, yes, yes, that's true. Oh. They lived there after, diba? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Then there's another one from uh, Jojo Eronimo. Uh, thanks for important differences between Rizal and Bonifacio, but can we tone down the downgrading of Rizal? I know it's not intentional, but that sounds so partisan and divisive. This is, I think, uh, comments to the other, those who are que uh, other questions. Oh. So, Dr. Mila already clarified that. Uh, uh, alam ninyo, see, if mm -hmm. I say you must study Bonifacio, you must also study Rizal. Mm -hmm. Rizal the man. Yes. Rizal the hero. Yeah. You must first study Rizal the man before you can appreciate that Hero Palacia, okay? That <laughs> Hero Palacia in many aspects, okay? Yeah. How he is devoted or he was devoted to his family to the point that uh, yung ginagawa niya sa kusina niya sa labas ng bayan, ito kwento niya kinano, Maria and uh, Bangoy. Mm -mm. It is as if like now, there is no separation, family, and uh, between family in the Philippines, and ano, and Rizal, whatever he is, you must read the letters of Rizal, okay, so that you can appreciate why he took the position, he's educated, he can, he can uh, anticipate what might happen when he takes this particular position or that particular position, okay? Mm -hmm. So, dalawa sila ni Nicola Pascio, okay? And the only difference was that Nicola Pascio took the, the, the arms right. uh, 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 as the leader of the revolution. But they are in tandem. You know, That's you true. You cannot put one down on education, Philippians. See? <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Guerrero. Uh, now, I, I will have to, uh, because, you know, we are already over time, actually. And uh, there would be a concluding parts of the program. 
But Dr. Guerrero, in on behalf, of course, I'm not here to speak for the whole group because I'm not even part of it. But I know that they are uh, thankful for all uh, for for your lecture and for the answers that you have given and for joining us. You know, we we all know that this is rare that you are uh, appearing uh, because. Uh, uh, there, there's so much difficulty now because of the pandemic, but thank you so much for giving us time this very special day of Bonifacio Day. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Do you have any uh, uh, final words for us, madam? Uh, this is a very special day. Uh, thank you for having Mabuhay, Dr. Guerrero. Nasa isang bansa, ba, ba, bangka po tayo. And thank you for this opportunity to be with you all. Uh, mabuhay po tayong lahat. And we now go back to our real moderator. Thank you so much. Hi. Thank you so much, Professor Chua, for moderating. I really appreciate your help. And I'm sure everyone else does here. Salamat po. That's our Bonifest 2020. Hope to see you again next year for another celebration of the life and heroism of Andres Bonifacio. We would like to thank our co-partner, Malaya Movement Toronto, the FCWJ Net organizing team, and special thanks to our volunteer performance. You guys are the best. Now, our deepest appreciation and gratitude to our guest, Dr. Mil Rosiguero for her research and insight on Bonifacio and the Philippine Revolution of 1896 prepared specifically for Bonifest. Of course, to all the participants in the Bonifest 2020 event who stayed with us on Zoom and on Facebook Live, thank you so much. Maraming salamat po. Hanggang sa susunod Bonifest, mabuhay! Now, um, if you would like to use the